the clarification from closing government before before I begin, uh, from closing opposition before I begin my speech. Number one, the context of the book is that we have this doctrine called people infallibility. That is to say that literally everything that the book says is true. So any argument about theological basis or theological inconsistency should not be counted at all in this debate, given the context that literally everything that, everything that the book said should be considered as the absolute truth in Christianity. However, the current book that is in power right now is pro Francis that is very progressive in nature. See, we will direct our case in the sense that we want to preserve this progressivity because we are speaking as the Catholic Church, but obviously we are not speaking as the Bible that Catholic Church. Right? So that's the first clarification. Second clarification, notice that even if the book is central power in the Catholic Church, they don't micromanage the entirety of the church and the world, ladies and gentlemen. We can see that the Catholic Church is centralized to Rome, but they don't have comprehensive political institution or bureaucratic system. Most of the time, things like child abuses or corruption happens at the local level, and the Pope are not able to, re to even reach to these areas, ladies and gentlemen. Which means that the argument coming from the opening government about you know ch child abuses and checks and balances is a mismatch solution because we felt that higher bureaucracy or high transparency, for instance, can still be done under closing opposition. We don't need to do any referendum at all. With this in mind, we're going to talk about two things in my speech. One, I'm going to talk about why the current progress of Catholic Church towards a more inclusive and uh, a more inclusive and more better church will be hampered under government. And secondly, I'm going to talk about why in the perspective of the church itself, they will eventually lose followers at the end of the day and why that is extremely terrible. First of all, it's about progress and checks and balances, right? We feel that the majority flaw from opening government is that we assume that all active Catholic Church members only cares about corruption and child abuse. We say that that's the context. What is the context? Two things. Number one, the Catholic Church members are right now mostly consisting of old people, ladies and gentlemen. In Europe and many other countries as well, the church attendance rate is declining and the majority of the people who stay in the church are the, are the old people like ranging from 50s to 70 years old, in which they still have massive attachment to traditionalist values such as anti-gay marriage and so on, and anti-gay marriage and trans people, for example, and so on and so forth. Second of all, even if young people do exist, most of the time they exist in small and very traditionalist communities that are not uh, that are not uh, that are uh, that does not have comprehensive communication server with a progressive world, with the urbanization, with, with the urbanized world. For example, we talk about the parallel to Amish community in the United States. What I'm trying to say with all of these two contexts is that most likely the ones that will take part in this referendum to impeach the Pope are the conservatives that are very dedicated and militant about their doctrine. We see that the context coming coming from the entire decide for the house about religious progressive that is wrong. I'm very sorry to see, but it's not factually true, ladies and gentlemen. Religious progressive is very weak right now. The face of feminism are things like radical organizations like women, right? Who like go naked at the face of the Pope every single day. We feel that this is not religious, that this is not progressive at all, and we feel that the majority of Catholic Church does not even accept these people as members to begin with, and even the progressives themselves does not affiliate as the members of Catholic Church at the end of the day. But begin with this, all of those all of those contacts. What will these people make a fuss about that? We say that most likely will not be things like child abuse or corruption. However, it is things like progressive efforts done by the Pope. Saying that atheists can go to heaven. Saying, who am I to judge gay people, for example? We see that given uh, the context that we have right now, is that a lot of people are hating the Pope for saying those things. However, they are forced to follow it because it is what the Bible says, ladies and gentlemen. Under their side of the house, these people will have the a leeway to say that I don't like this and I do have the power to impeach this and so I should not do this ladies and gentlemen. We see that compared to the child abuses or corruption, most likely those sorts of issues will be put to much less attention. Why is that the case? Because note that for these sorts of people, they prioritize religion as an exclusive identity instead of how it can benefit mankind as a whole. The reason is why the majority of religious people, in the same, conservative religious people in the world right now, prioritizes things like the specific rituals, for example, instead of how can we promote better charities to people, for instance, shows to you that the priority of these sorts of people is how they are able to make themselves exclusive and how they are able to promote themselves as a superior people, for example, in comparison to with the majority of mankind. Why is this argument very important? Because note that most likely, in the instances in which this policy is passed, a referendum will be triggered, and thus the likelihood of Pope Francis to be taken down will be very big. And we say that given the context of Skype now, Pope Francis tries to solidify the current tradition of the Catholic Church to be more progressive, this is a platform to be will be decreased at the end of the day, and we say that it's extremely harmful. Before I move on to my second argument, sure. why the Pope have obligation to pander to the minority instead of the majority that becomes the basic constituents of the Catholic Church as in general? Okay, here's the thing. I have already told you that regardless of what the Pope says, we must concede it as true. 
Okay, so you so we don't wish so we should not talk about how should the Pope thinks because everything that the Pope says the Catholic Church should follow. The case direction of closing opposition is that given that right now the Pope is progressive and the Pope is making progress towards a more inclusive church, and given that right now there is massive opposition to him, we should not give this conservative little way to take him down, and that is case we should engage to that. So this is my first argument. Secondly, let's talk about attacks from other religions, right? We see that the, one of the things that Catholic Church is most proud about is the idea of centralized doctrine of disengagement. Because of the French Catholic Church from other branches of Christianity, such as Protestantism or Orthodoxy, for example, is that we do recognize the central authority of the Pope, we do recognize the central authority of the Vatican. And note that oftentimes, these sense of specific different rituals are things that we promote in order for us to, con to, to persuade other patients to convert to our religion, for instance, and for, and for us to promote our, our religion to, our, to people outside Christianity as well. Under their side of the house, the narrative that will be said is that even the most explicit and centralized doctrine of Christianity, which is the system that would be in and of itself, is compromised by worldly nature and disengagement. And you see that, that it is that it is going to be an extremely strong narrative to get people out of our religion at the end of the day. Because I say, because I have to say this again, the most influential factor that influences people to go to a certain religion is not only how the, how the religion benefits mankind as a whole, because all religion preaches good, right? But oftentimes the tipping point and the competitive advantage that each religion tries to promote is that we do have an exclusive identity, we do have an exclusive system in this religion, and in this religion only ladies and gentlemen. Under their side, the narrative that will be is that we are trying to up other religious systems in which decentralization does happen. We do follow other, uh, uh, we, we do follow the current political trend as well. We say that most likely it will reduce the amount of people to go to our Catholic Church at the end of the day. We say that it's extremely bad because obviously one of the interests of the Catholic Church is that we, both, we want to get as much followers as possible. We want to uh, we want to make them not go to hell, right? So what we have in this debate is conclusion. Look at the 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 thing that you must realize is that anything the Pope says is absolutely true. And thus, we must look at the perspective of what will the Pope be like under their side. Most of it will be harmful, it will not be inclusive. We say that even if some conservatives are, are not unhappy with the current Pope at that they will be able to still follow it anyway. No disability will happen. We close the game. Over the case of the